A couple of weeks ago, I made this piece on the YouTube channel. And while I was making that piece, I happened upon a technique that I had never tried before. Ever since then, I've been wanting to make a whole woven wall hanging out of that technique because if it works well, it would hit on all the things. Fast, easy, and cute. Let's get started. Okay, I've already cut myself a dowel, so I'm just gonna put this on my loom to dictate how wide this piece is gonna be. But really, I don't think it's gonna matter how wide or narrow your piece is. This is one of those techniques that the warp string is actually gonna show on the piece. So I'm gonna use 412 linen because I just really love the texture and color. Now that the warp is on, I'm gonna do all of my base work. So that's gonna include my twining stitch, plain weave, and fringe. If you want a tutorial for how I like to start every weaving, click right here. Okay, next I'm gonna do the fringe and I'm gonna be using one strand per two warp strings of this seven millimeter cotton string. I'll put links in the description box below for the materials that I'm using. So basically what this technique is, you take a full thickness of merino wool roving and you weave it in and then you shape it into whatever shape you want. And so I'll explain a little bit clearer, but I'm gonna tell you the colors that I'm using. I'm using all merino wool roving that you can find in our shop. I'll link it in the description box below, but of course you can use any wool roving for this project. So I'm gonna be using the colors wood, sage, rogue, tulle, and natural. I absolutely love these colors together. Now, I don't want to get my wool all agitated while I do this, so I'm gonna use a shed stick. For my shed stick, today I'm actually using a metal ruler because that's all I could find, but you can use anything from a wood ruler, a paint stick, or an actual shed stick. I just figure most of us probably have some sort of something like this around. So I'm going to weave in my ruler, just again, plain weave and then we're gonna create the shed. So that's just lifting this up. Now, I think my shed stick might be a little big in this case for how tight my warp is, but it seems to be okay. So then I'm gonna take a piece of my roving. I'm gonna leave a tail on each side and I'm just gonna feed it through carefully. Yeah, this, this shed stick was maybe a little bit large for the size of whom I'm using. So now is where we can sort of shape the wool. So could create a bit of a, a dip down in the middle and then have it kind of arch back up on the side. And then I can just let that down and that's the first section. So you see how much room this takes up, which is really, great. This tail is definitely longer than it needed to be, but that's going to tuck in like this. Now this one, you can see that it's going under this far warp string. So I'm going to just cheat it and just put it over two warp strings on this one side so that it all sits like that. Now, before I do the next color, what I want to do is put some twining in there because if we don't, I'm not sure it's going to hold as well. So I think it would be a good idea to do some twining. So I'm thinking I'm just gonna use the same Lion Brand Wooly Thick and Quick that I normally use at the base of my weaving. And then we'll sort of have each section outlined with this off-white color. Okay, so now my first section is done and I can sort of play around with it to make sure it's like where I want it to be. But now I'm gonna go in with my next color, which I think I'm gonna do this sage color next. And so now we can sort of play around with the shape of that. So I'm gonna take another chunk and I think I'm gonna take my cardstock out because now that all this base work is in, it's not really gonna go anywhere. And if I take this out, it's gonna let there be a little bit more slack in my warp. I still, I still think this is too big. Maybe I can use my dowel. I think that's a little bit better. So now I can, I can make the shape kind of opposite. I can add, I can just basically make it whatever I want it to be. So now that that piece is in, I can go in again with the twining stitch. Now I need to make sure that I'm leaving enough room for all the colors and I don't necessarily have to go all the way across with this color. So that's something to consider as well. Do I want to, let's just see what that would look like. Like if I pulled this out and made a shape like that, Basically, I need to consider 
you know, how much space I have on this piece. That's kind of interesting. I feel like that might look a little bit better. So I think I'm gonna do that, but I think I'll still take my twining. Well, I guess it doesn't need to go all the way across, does it? It really only needs to cover this. So maybe I'll just do that. What I like about this is it almost has like a quilted look to it. If you imagine one of those really basic quilts where the lines are just sewn in vertically and I really like that. So now I could put this here. I'm still gonna take a full width just in case I want to go all the way across. It's definitely gonna get trickier as we get closer to the top of the loom, that's for sure. So now I can fill in that space and see what that looks like. So I'm just kind of questioning if I want it to go all the way across or not. So if we did like maybe to here, I'm thinking I go all the way across, I think I stagger it. If I go all the way across with the pink, part way across with the blue, and then all the way across with the white again, maybe that'll bring in just some, some balance to it. So I'm gonna weave this back in. Okay, let's put the twining stitch in and then play with it again. The twining stitch really holds everything, so I feel like it's a little bit easier to play with the shape once the twining is in because it allows you to just maneuver it and have it stay better. I think that looks kind of good. I think I like the idea of keeping this a little bit. I'm basically trying to make this not just exactly the same all the way up. So maybe this should be a little bit wider up here. Okay, next is the blue. And I think just like with the green, I'm gonna go part way across with the blue. So I think I will take a slightly shorter piece. And now that I'm getting close to the top, I'm thinking I should just weave this in by hand. And we're gonna go over these two warp strings and then over one under one. And I can sort of do just a few at a time to try not to be dragging the whole piece through a lot of warp strings at a time. So I'm feeling like if I want this to come to this point a little bit better, if maybe I should, here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna just do it, but I'm gonna take this roving and split it carefully so that it's thinner. I'm gonna tuck this end back here and I'm gonna go at least one more with this. And then that way it's a little bit thinner, so I was able to go for more of a point, but I think I went too far. That works a little better. And then again, I'm trying to make sure this shape is different from this one, which I definitely think it is. It's got more of just an arch. And then lastly, I'm gonna go in with the white and I'm gonna go all the way across. So now I'm gonna use this piece to fill in those dips over here and make it nice and straight at the top. And then I'm hoping I can, that's enough space to fit over my dowel. And I think for the very top, oh, and I need to go over two warp strings here. I think for the very top, I don't wanna just do a twining stitch. I think I'm gonna do um, two rows of plain weave and then a twining stitch because I think that's just gonna hold everything a little bit nicer at the top. I am loving this so far, but we definitely wanna see if the structure is sound at the end of this. So let me finish this up and we will have a moment of truth and see if it worked. Let's have a look at the finished piece. This is it, I love it, I'm into it. I think it looks great. 
and it was super quick and easy. It's adorable. You could do it in any color palette you want, and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you enjoyed this video, you're probably gonna love this one.